In this video, I will give you some simple macro photography photo ideas and suggestions with the aim to get those creative juices bubbling away and to inspire you to get out there and give it a go. If you're a seasoned macro photographer, there might be something in here to inspire you which you can then add to your own work. If you are new to the macro photography game, these ideas might give you something different to try out, which you can then expand in your own style and way of shooting. I mean, what do you have to lose? This is free after all. So let's get into it. The first idea is something I like to call the Johnny Three Shots technique. I often go into my macro photography the same way I do with my bird photography. I try and tell a story about the subject by capturing three images. Now this depends on a lot of factors, such as if it's a fast moving subject, or in a tricky location. You might not be able to get three shots, but if you can get at least one shot with this technique, you'll be happy. What I mean by three shots here is not only taking three shots, I mean three different perspectives of your subject. Let me show you. The first one I try and do is a situational shot. Try and get the subject in its environment. It might be small on the frame, or it could be surrounded by leaves. You want to be able to see it in relation to its world. The second shot, this should be your full body shot. Try and get your subject to take up the entirety of your frame. Fill the frame with your subject, really show off those details here. Try and crop in camera, not in post. And the final shot is the portrait shot. Try and get nice and close with your subject, show it all off. I want to see those peepers. Now, as I said before, you might not be able to get all these shots done at the one time but it can give you great motivation to try something different and to tell a story. You really want to showcase the personality of your subject when it's in its own world. The second idea is to use different compositions. You could try adding leading lines into your images to draw your audience into this strange world. Think landscape photography. Here are a couple of examples. This also creates a great story within the image as well. Also, try using negative space. I can sometimes be a bit guilty in using this too much, but it is a really effective technique. Using negative space can help show the scale of the subject in relation to the world they live in. Another thing to try, and something that I haven't seen a lot of in macro photography, is backlighting your subject. Tricky to do, but when done well, it can be quite effective. Insects have really great recognizable outlines, and when backlit, their silhouettes can create powerful images. The third idea, and maybe an obvious one, but focus on textures. If you stop and take a look at the places these insects live in, you'll find many different textures and shapes. This is an easy win here, because you can't lose taking photos of textures. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Take a look at some leaves. Take a look at some flower petals. The dew on grass. It's endless the amount of textures that are outside waiting to be photographed. This is a great exercise in slowing down and focusing on your environment. The more that you look, the more that you'll see, which in turn will make you a happier macro photographer. So there you go. Some simple ideas that could get those creative juices flowing. So why not try them out and see how you go? What do you have to lose? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Cheers. If you would like to know more about macro photography and what settings to use to get the best results, luckily there's a video here. If you are interested in a macro photography lens, such as the Lauer 100mm, luckily there's a review right here.